Hello and welcome to the AppSense Masterclass Part 5. This is all about configuring the AppSense Personalization Server. So here we are with my AppSense um, servers here, which also, as you remember, is my domain controller as well as my SQL server. And you can see from the previous uh, videos that we've installed the AppSense uh, con consoles and we've configured them and we've created some basic configurations. So the first thing we need to do is go to our live conf console uh, config that we have for our environment manager. So we'll just double click and we'll open up the AppSense environment manager console. You can see the AppSense environment manager console is launching and we need to open our config. So here's our console and let's go up and open our config. So configuration we have from our management center. So as usual, connect up to the management server, use password authentication. And we select the top one, which is our environment manager demo. And you can see the versions that I have here. So let's just open this up. I'm going to open it and lock it. So here is our config and as previously we have our sanity check. Now one thing I did not do in the previous video was give you some best practices on how to create items within a configuration. This will action, these two shortcuts will action, the notepad and the calculator will action for all users and I normally don't want that to happen. Normally what I'll be doing is adding a condition in here and saying if my user is not an administrator so unchecked, select and now we can use the nodes and we can move this node up and move these two nodes and we move them across and you can also use the keyboard shortcuts so control arrow keys to shift across so that protects my administrator and it's always good practice to make sure that you do that every time uh, you create any configs within the environment manager console just to protect your administrator especially if you're doing GPO work or ADM work because you could potentially lock yourself out so there's my config right to run um, personalization server what we must do is we must enable personalization server from the config that is deployed out that is how the the client device knows that it needs to enable personalization so if we select the button and we need to add in a personalization server so add in my personalization server and select that and we should now see that the button is green for enabled. So we can now go and save this configuration out. So we're going to save and unlock it. And that configuration is now being applied out. So we just made a couple of changes there and uh, save out the config. And we'll give it some information. Enabled personalization. And save that config out. And that's gone. And as you'll see, it will unload the config. That's fine. Now we're going to go across to our personalization section. So you can see the console split into two policy and personalization. So if we go into personalization, now all this message box is warning me is that the config that I've got previously it has not had personalization enabled. And that is because of, I have unloaded it. Don't worry about this message box, you'll get used to it. Okay, so what we need to do is now connect to our personalization server. So we hit the connect button. There is our personalization server, and again through pass through. And you can see now that we have connected through, um, we have information on the database, the versions, and the size of the database. Now, one thing to be very careful with the with this side of the console is everything you do is live to the database. So there's no saving or unlocking; it's all live. So the first thing we need to do is go down into our personalization groups, and again we have a default users. Anybody that has not been pre-configured will fit into the default user section and the membership rule here is blank and you cannot add to this. Now I'm going to go across to the properties and as best practices what I tend to do is I switch off all settings for default users and switch these off. Therefore I'm not going to manage anything for users that I'm not aware of with personalization. So that's switched off. And I also want to protect my administrators. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new personalization group in here. And we're going to call this administrators. And we'll get the spelling right. And for administrators, I'm going to add in a membership rule. I'm going to say that my user group 
is equal to and domain admins. And again, I am going to go and switch everything off. Because if I do not want my domain admins to be personalized in case I need to get back into my system, in case I've made any mistakes, it's just protecting myself. Okay, and what we're going to do now is I'm going to create a personalization group for my users. So in here, I'm going to say this is AppSense Managed Users. And I need a membership rule. So what I tend to do is we go in and we're going to Active Directory. I'm going to go and create a security group. And I'm going to go in and add in my security group in here. So I'm going to go new and we're going to add in a security group and it's going to be a standard security group and that's going to be AppSense Managed Users create that okay so now that I've got my AppSense Managed Users group all I need to do is we'll go into the properties of this and we're going to add in my two users that I want to use my finance and my engineer user and we'll check the names on that and they're there and they're added in. Excellent. So what we can now do is go back to our personalization server settings and we can add membership rule and add in user group sense managed users and click OK. And there it is there. So we know now that anybody that we put into that group will be managed by AppSense personalization server. Anybody that's not in that group then it will have no effect. It's just a safety mechanism. Okay, before we start to allow any users to log on, it's imperative that we set up the session data part of the personalization server as well as the desktop settings. This is important because every time an application launches, AppSense will virtualize the registry and the file system, or in other words, app data for that application individually and put it in the database. So when Word is launched, it takes a copy of the real registry and has a before scenario. When you make changes to Word, changing the personality of it to make it uh, appropriate to your working, then AppSense will then save the delta differences that you made to the register in the file system for Word out to the database. It will do it independently for Excel and for Outlook and any other applications you launch. Now, this can cause a problem for shared keys that need to be session-wide, or as AppSense called it, session data. A prime example of this would be the Windows sub-messaging key. This is used by the system as a whole not just Outlook and not just Word but by the system as a whole so if we personalized it individually for Outlook for Word for Excel then you would have different Outlook mail sub messaging key settings and you wouldn't get a consistent look and feel and the problem is, is if you do not do this at the beginning then you can end up with a defragmented database with different settings in different areas for different applications so it's important that we do session data to do session data we select the session data tab up the top and by default only the top one is in is uh, coded in for you what you have to do is you need to add in all of these extra keys for the, for the information that you want to persist at session wide so for example internet explorer settings you'll need to add this key in because they are system wide uh, printers printers again are session wide and the windows shell for inf information about how your internet your windows explorer icons look the order that you've got them in whether they're large or small icons now this may look a little bit daunting however we've produced a nice quick simple little document that you'll find on the download page of the videos uh, near the bottom of the page and it's called how to personalize environment manager personalization installation doc and it's a word document and this information you require is in the session data section and you can see an example on the screen here and all we need to do is we need to go through this and select the parts that we need to persist now by default I suggest you take everything so for example if I want the most recent key used just take a copy of it copy it go to our session data add right click and paste it in now I already have this key and it's important that you make sure you remove any spaces on the end I already have this key so it's going to warn me that the key already exists um, because I've already pre-done this to save time on the video but you need to go through this document 
and go through all of the keys for the Mappy Exchange file associations. Again, they are system wide, not just application wide. And further down, there are some specific ones for XP 2003 and Windows 7 2008 Vista. Um, just add them both in. The system is clever enough to work out which ones you need to persist. So I've gone through and I've already copied those into my session data. So close that down. Imperative that you do that at the beginning. If I now go and have a look in my desktop settings, this is the information that I want to be persisted from a desktop point of view, graphical point of view, to the user when they log on and log off. Again, session data and desktop settings are sent on log on and log off, uh, pretty much like a roaming profile does. And then as you use your applications, the data for those applications is then streamed independently for those applications in a just-in-time scenario. Okay, so now that we've set up our AppSense Managed User Personalization Group, we've done our desktop settings and we've done our session data, let's log the user onto our XP machine to make sure that this is all working. Again, first let's just double check that we've actually got the right config that's out that tells it which personalization server. So here's my computer, XP Desktop 01, and everything is deployed, all green ticks across the board. So let's go and log this guy on and log him off and see what happens. So we're going to log him on here. Uh, my finance user and we should of course get a nice quick log on with a mandatory profile and my icons for notepad and calculator on screen there and of course they are surrounded by the administration uh, if not administrator condition and that's all working nicely and all we're going to do is just straight away log off so if we log off i've made no extra changes or anything to any applications it's just a straight log on and log off and if we come back to our personalization server and we come down into our environment manager personalization server section we can now do a right click on the manage users and do a personalization analysis now this is effectively a screen display of what's in the sql database per user so i can just go straight to the first tab and just hit display and i will see information available there for the finance user if I select it, it will tell me the parts that it's taken out. So my desktop settings, it's taken information about the graphical look and feel on the session-wide desktop settings. Session data, those are those keys that we added in. The keys that persisted, that you need to persist per session, and there's one there for certificates. I can, if I want, go and have a look in here and see what it's actually been doing. So I can go edit application. It's just giving me a quick warning here saying, be careful what you're doing, because if you can actually change things live in the database. Now if we go and have a look, you can see the information that it's taken out, control panel, colors, cursors, custom conditions, uh, custom colors, etc. So that's information for log on, log off, a very quick, simple test. Log on, log off, data is being persisted for that user. So let's now log this user back on and we'll make some changes to an application. So we'll come back in again and we'll log the finance user on again. So again, as he logs on mandatory profile, the desktop settings will be applied, any screen refresh is done, and session data will be written to the real registry. Let's go and run an application now. Let's run Notepad. So we're going to take Notepad, and we're going to change the font size on Notepad to 48, and do that with it. And at the same time, we're going to take Word, and we're going to change Word options, and we'll set that to black. Okay, so here I have now some personalization on Notepad and Word. When I close Notepad down and Word down, they're going to want to write to their individual sections of the registry, of the registry and the uh, file system, app data, which AppSense is going to personalize and put in the database, and it's going to go in the format of domain name, user, slash application. So I'm going to do that for Notepad and Word, close those down, and again, we're going to log off. And as we've logged off, what we can now do is we can go back to our personalization server and see what extra data has been populated. So if I go into manage users and again do a personalization analysis and display, I can see my finance user. On the face of it, nothing's actually changed. And the reason nothing's changed is we've not told AppSense to start personalizing applications. All I have done so far is discovered applications. So if we go and have a look in the discovered application list and do a display, we will now see all of the individual applications or processes that have launched while that user was logged on. And the two that we can see here are WinWord and Notepad down the bottom. 
you will notice that there are other programs, for example, reader underscore SL that are hidden from the user in the background, and we do not really need to personalize these. Now, we could, if we wanted to, go automatically manage all user applications, and every single one of these will turn from gray, which is discovered, and turned into blue, which is discovered and managed. But we don't want to take everything. We only want to take certain certain applications to reduce the data set even further. So in the case of WinWord, what we can do is we can go convert to discovered application. And this will automatically pre-populate a dialog box for us to turn this into an AppSense discovered application, which we then can associate to a whitelist of a personalization group. So I'm going to call this MS Word to make it easy to find. And I want all of my versions of operating system versus application for Word to be grouped together into one virtual bubble. So where possible, we will share Word settings across all operating systems, across all versions of Word. And I will now say I want you to add that into the AppSense Managed Whitelist. So these are now going to become AppSense Managed Applications. As we can see, Discovered Managed, hopefully they will turn blue the next time we use them. I'm going to click OK on that. And you will notice that Word has disappeared. Another way that you can do this is if you know what the application is, you can go into Application Categories user and we can manually add this in so again i'm going to call this ms notepad and we'll give that a title of notepad.exe and you don't need to fully qualify this and click ok and notepad is there now if we go down into our absence managed users what we can do now is go into whitelist right click and manually add the application in there so there's two methods there of doing it one is obviously a lot quicker than the other, but if you know your list of applications, then you can manage those applications there. So if we go back now into personalization analysis and do a display in here, with our finance user, we can see we've still got a desktop settings, our session data and our certificates. In our discovered list here, Notepad is still there because I haven't manually converted it. This will happen automatically as I log on and log off but we notice that Word has, has gone already. So let's go and log our user back on and off again. So let's log him on again, our finance user. Now, because of Word and Notepad were not managed, then we will not get personalization. All we've done is discovered so far. So if we now go and run Notepad, and you notice it's back to the mandatory profile uh, because of we've not run this yet while we're in a discovered mode into a whitelisted mode so this time now we're going to change this to size 48 and we're going to take this and resize it and we'll go into our word settings and we'll take word and again we'll just go in and change this so it's obvious what we're doing and okay on that that's saved and we'll close these out now, I don't have to log on and log off. Everything should be automatic here because of applications are done in real time. So if I now go back to my personalization server and come in and do a personalization analysis again, and if we do a display for our finance user, you'll notice now that Word and Notepad have moved into the managed list. We can see them here. And again, we can go in and we can go and see which settings that AppSense has been populated from the, off from the office registry section and put it into the database. And we can see those there. Now this is live, automatic, just in time. And if we go into our discovered applications list and display there, we can see our discovered apps. And we can see that Notepad is still there as a discovered application. However, what is primarily important is that they're here, Notepad and MS Word. So these applications are relating to the whitelist that we have set up here. Now, we can test that this is all working by logging the user off and logging him back on again from our XP desktop. And if we have got this right, then our settings should have been persisted over the top of the mandatory profile. So let's log off. So we're just logging off here. The log off actions are processing. Nice, quick, clean log off. And we'll log back on again as the finance user. Remember, we're logging on as a mandatory profile. The desktop settings are being brought over the top. And then we can then launch our applications. So if we now run Notepad, then what we should see is that when we launch Notepad, then the window size and position and the uh, the font size should now be persisted to us, which they are quite happily. 
And if we go in and run, for example, Word again, then our settings are persisted to us. OK, so let's close these down. And we can close these down on this side because they are now being persisted into the database. And let's go and check to make sure that our Windows 7 has been updated as well. So let's go and have a look at our Windows 7 desktops, computers. Yes, we have the correct config. It's installed. Everything's up and running. So what we should now be able to do is go into our Windows 7 machine and log on. And this is the way that I do my testing. I will create a couple of applications. I will make sure the session data and the desktop settings are set up first. I will then probably create Notepad and WinWord, two simple applications. I will set them up in a whitelist. I will then pre-populate them using an XP machine with a user. And then we will then test in a Windows 7 server. And as you can see, my Windows 7 machine has logged on and it has actually taken the background image because remember in my desktop settings, I said allow wallpaper. So now instead of the black background that we had in Windows 7 Mandatory Profile, we have persisted the XP background on logon as part of desktop settings into our Windows 7 machine. And let's test our application. So if we run Notepad, Let's take Notepad and run it. Then we should have the same settings being followed and persisted around for us. And again, if we run Word, so we'll come in here and we'll run Microsoft Office and we'll run Word, then the settings should be persisted around for us independent of our OS. So here's Word launch now, Word 2007, and it's getting the data from the database. And there we are, nice black backgrounds, default that we set up in our XP machine. Now we can go and change some of this information. So we can take Word and we can resize it like so. We'll take Notepad, we'll change it. So into Notepad, and we're just going to change the font on this, and we'll go and change this font size down to something more manageable, like font 11 size. There we go, and we'll have it that size, and we'll put it down in this bottom corner. And again, as I close this, AppSense is writing the delta changes to the database for Notepad. And don't save that. So if we now go back to our XP machine, here is our XP machine. Those data page changes should be live. So when I run Notepad, my settings and my information has followed me. When I run Word, my settings and my information has followed me for Word as well. So just to sum up, what we've done there is we've gone through and done a very quick, simple test is we have gone into our personalization server. We have created a personalization group for AppSense managed users which is here. We've added it to our AppSense Managed Users security group. We have set up the session data, which is imperative you do that at the beginning. We have decided which desktop settings we want to persist across all of our images. And then we have gone in and we have created a whitelist of applications that we want to even be managed over and beyond the desktop and the session data information. So all we need to do now is start working our way through here. So we're going to go in and add in some more applications in here. And again, I'm going to keep these simple. MSXL.MSLXE and Excel. We'll do XE and again, all applications on there. And we're going to add in another application. Um, with PowerPoint as PowerPNT.exe. And we add that one in there. And we're going to also add in another application. MS Outlook, and that's going to be Outlook.exe. Now, remember when we talked about having to group applications that share the same registry settings? So, for example, all applications rely on session data and desktop settings because it's session information. Well, there are certain applications that share keys, and the classic example of these is the Office group. If I change my default color schema on Word, it should also change in Excel. However, if I do not group applications, Word and Excel will be treated completely separate in their own virtual bubbles and the information will not be shared. So what we do to overcome that situation is we create what we call an application group. And I'm going to add in an application group here, add application group, and I'm going to call this my MS Office application group. And we're going to go and add in applications and my MS Office application group are going to be these applications here. These will now all be grouped into one virtual bubble.
and they will all share the same set of registry and file um, segments in the AppSense database. To apply that, I need to go to my managed application users list and I go to my whitelist and I add in my application group MS Office. And I'm getting warned that I've already got an entry for Word and that I need to remove this. So I'm just going to go in and remove the application for Word here. And that's gone. Now I've done this a slightly different way, um, and it's probably not the way you'd do it. I created Word and showed you an example and then created the group. You wouldn't normally do it that way, you'd create the group and just run from there. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to remove that data for Word. To do that, all I do is I go into my personalization analysis and I can right click and I can delete all the user setting data for MS Word here. So we'll just take that out and start that from fresh. So that's now gone. You know, it's my notepad still here, my session, my data information is still there. So we can again, we can close these down now. And again, we can go and log on our users and log them off and make sure that things are working. So let's go and log off our user from our Windows 7 machine. And we'll go and log off our user, log off from our XP machine. So we're just going to log these two guys off and we're going to test the operation to make sure that this is working. So of course now my Windows 7 machine is just logging off. Here he is. So what we're going to do is log on to our Windows 7 machine. And we're going to log on as the finance user. And we're going to make some changes. We're going to make changes to Excel. We're going to make changes to Word and to Notepad. And we're going to change some session data and some desktop data and see what happens. And see if that then is persisted across to my Windows uh, XP machine. So first thing we're going to do. So I'm going to come in and we're going to go and change the wallpaper something that's very obvious and very good for demos so we take our wallpaper and we will go and take some windows wallpapers and we'll take a nice classic windows 7 one and save those changes out and there's our lovely windows 7 wallpaper and then we'll go in and do office and we'll run excel so we're going to take excel excel 2007 you know notice that it is in its default mandatory so we're going to take this and we'll change the Excel options and we'll change this to silver this time. So there is in a lovely silver format. We'll close that down. We'll take notepad. And remember, see, we've still persisted the notepad settings because we did not delete those from the database. And we're going to change the font on this. And we'll change the font on this to 22. And we'll go to modern. It looks a bit nicer. And we'll close that down. And we will take word as well. So we'll go into Office and we'll take Word. And you notice Word is now in the silver background format. And we'll change that like so and close that down. And we're going to log off. Because I'm logging off, I am now going to get my session information and my wall desktop information saved to the database. And you can see that we're running the Environment Manager log off actions. And we are logging off and we're now going to go Cross and we'll take a look at my XP machine and we'll log on to my XP machine. Oops, no password. And we're going to log on here. So there's my original wallpaper that we had before. As I'm logging on, then my wallpaper has changed now to the one that I saved previously in my Windows 7 machine. And I got my look and feel. And if I now run my applications, so I'm going to take Notepad and you can see that I've got my modern type font here. And if I now go and run Excel, I should now see that Excel is pre-populated with the silver schema. And if I run Word, you should see that everything has followed me around. So there's a quick, simple demonstration of how to install whitelisted applications, session data, desktop settings, testing and making sure that the system's working. And that's the method I normally would go through between XP Windows 7 machines to build a basic demo as a starting block to move forward. The personalization server. In the next video, we'll cover five further parts of personalization server and then we'll move on to environment manager configurations of policy.